perverted it and then pushed it back into the face of culture and white culture and white white entertainment complex um, to create a statement. So look at movies like Bamboozled. Uh, even look at uh, uh, Little Brother. Uh, they had an album called The Minstrel Show where they were they were kind of mockingly being uh, uh, making kind of the sambo faces and then the big smiles and stuff like that. Even look at Jay-Z's 444 album and uh, the story of OJ, where he had kind of a sambo, kind of a black-faced kind of character, so to, so to speak. Not necessarily black-faced, but, but, but those features of black-faced, which, which they exemplify, such as the big lips and the, and the whole thing. Um, and just really look at how that, you know, how that has progressed through society and what it means. And if it hurts you, why does it hurt you? Because it's not, it's not cool to just sit there and be hurt and be offended because blackface necessarily, if, if that's a, a weapon that they can use against you and you haven't found a way to kind of eliminate that or neutralize it, then it'll always be able to be used as a weapon against you. And the point is not to just become comfortable with the weapon or is to, is to overcome the weapon, right? Overcome what it, the damage that it does to you. Make it, make, not necessarily make yourself immune to it, but at least build up a stronger defense because you have a deeper understanding. And most of the times there's two sides to the story. And when you get both sides of the story, it kind of neutralizes that. So I just say that, take that into consideration if you're feeling a certain ways about it. It's not to defend Drake. If you hate Drake, I mean, you hate him. It is what it is. I'm not trying to correct you from that. Um, what I am trying to say is take this opportunity to really study deeply the history of blackface, some of its political implications from when it first started, which was actually like in the 1400s, I think was the first kind of case of it, right? I mean, don't, do, do, don't, don't judge me on that, but I mean, it's, it's something that's been around for a while. Um, it's not something that's new. Um, and then it's heyday through the 1800s and in America and different places around the world, um, and then all the way up to today. And then how it affects you, how, it, how you deal with it. Um, so that's really just that on that, okay? Um, Cool. Everybody cool with that? Did I make my point? Am I? Did I leave something out? Uh, do you? If you do, you agree. If you don't agree, I mean, it's fine. It, it doesn't. It it doesn't really matter. Um, and it doesn't really undo what has what has happened. So for my thoughtful fans out there, um, you know, maybe take a deeper look into blackface if you're interested. If not, so be it. What I do want to do is uh. Talk about something very specific, and and it's weird. It's, it's it's separate from all of this Drake stuff. That stuff is over. So if you want to leave, you can leave. Um, there's no more talk about this records and battles and blah blah blah. Shout to Pusha and Drake. Um, hope you brothers can uh, find some reconciliation, uh, even at the height of your uh, your your conflict, because uh, this that's what we need is actually unification, not separation. Um, but I do want to talk about something that's inspired by this, which is something that I found out a long, it's, 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 maybe a couple years ago, I was doing some research and I found this and it, it blew my mind because I was like, wow, this is super racist, but it's double racist, it's like interesting racist. And it's interesting because it brings up Drake as the, the, the impetus of this because Drake is black and he's Jewish. Um, and I made a comment where I said Drake is a mix of kind of the two most hated races on earth, um, uh, blacks and Jews, um who just have a history, documented history of just being like beat up, you know, for, for a, a long time. Um, and history of, of great achievements um, and beautiful collaborations. One of the be most beautiful collaborations other than Drake being black and Jewish and creating Galchester for me, which is a great, you know, shouts of blacks and Jews coming together and creating Galchester. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, one of my favorite songs of all time, which is uh, Strange Fruit. Uh, Strange Fruit, which is a song about lynching, um, which was written actually by a Jewish writer and was sung by Billie Holiday, um, one of the most one of the most famous and prestigious black singers of all time, who actually was a heroin addict to bring in Pusha T back into this situation, um, and him using Whitney Houston's album cover uh, picture of her, uh, you know, her her bathroom and the, her bathroom and the drugs and stuff like that. Um, to really bring some interesting historical context and really take this in another direction. You have uh, a song like Strange Fruition, which is about to bring light and awareness to the issue of blacks being lynched, um, sung by a black woman, uh, written by a Jewish man. You fast forward now, you have Drake, who's a black person, also Jewish, mixed, um, who is being kind of like put out into the world as having blackface, doing a photo shoot where you use blackface with a Jim Crow t-shirt, which is actually a company called Two Black Guys in Canada, which actually makes some dope clothes, um, who actually are like 
really super radical and inspired by Malcolm X. So before you go too crazy about that Jim Crow T-shirt, please understand that that brand has actually did major work to bring, you know, some awareness through clothing um, with some of their things. I got I had a dope a dope jacket from them that was about picking cotton, which was just like insane to even just be able to wear. It was so nuts. So don't don't write that off. Don't don't drink that Kool Aid too too deeply. Um, because there's a story behind that shirt, which I think actually you pro-black and black woke folks will actually really kind of be inspired by from a business and from a cultural fashion standpoint. Um, the flip-flop, the flip-flop, what, bringing that back to say that, you know, Billie Holiday was a drug addict when Houston was addicted to drugs for a time. Um, and to just kind of see these two weird things come back together and coalesce is very interesting to me. So the reason I bring this up is because of this picture right here. Right. Can y'all see that? That picture right there. Let you absorb it, soak it in. So what we got right here, we got a, a black person playing the saxophone, probably some jazz, dressed up in the jazziness of the time. He's got that earring, right? That was actually pretty swaggy. They got the big old sambo lips, somewhat of a black face caricature, but he has a Jewish star, the star of David right here right and it says in in tarte music and some german so this was german um this was actually something that was produced by the nazi. so this was something that was produced by the uh the uh the nazi party um and it was for an exhibition that they did i don't know if this the music exhibition was part of this but they did an art a art exhibition um about degenerative music and they looked at it as music that was done by jews and blacks and homosexuals and all the other per, per peoples in person who weren't just pure Jewish, pure Nazi Aryan blood, everything that they did was uh, was considered to be degenerate and to be rejected from society. Um, and this was a real, real thing. This really happened. And what they did, they went and they got all of this kind of art and music and things and stuff that was done by the, those races of folks, so Jews and blacks and different folks. And they, they did this big exhibit. Um, to sh to like kind of mockingly show it, and they had they they paid people to be in the exhibit to like make fun of stuff and and create kind of like tension. They they really kind of defaced the artwork with like handwritten things. They tried to really expose that it was primitive and 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 not on the level of kind of like the classic white folk German kind of aesthetic. Um, and then out the, the exhibit actually turned out to be one of the most visited. Uh, exhibits in modern history in terms of modern art because um, they really focused on kind of like modern art saying it was degenerate expressionism stuff like that and then they took a lot of the work and they burned it um, so after they put on the show for the German public to kind of parade and expose uh, blacks and Jews and people that they didn't like is kind of making degenerative primitive, primitive art they took everything and they burned it um, some of it they burned some of the stuff they sold off actually to american folks and did auctions and stuff like that so i just wanted to bring this up just to show you you know the power of art right